so the first thing we have to understand is that Daniel, he understood. He had an intimate knowledge of God's word and his promises. He knew the word. He knew the promises of God. He heard of Jeremiah's prophecy. So he understood that the judgment would end. He understood that there was an appointed time for Israel's release. He understood that that was 70 years. And this was a ways away. This wasn't like the next day was the 70 year mark. It wasn't like he was going to pray today and see the answer tomorrow. He knew that. There was a promise in place. Daniel stood, he got wind of Jeremiah's prophecy and stood on it. And some of you in this season, you need to go back and look at the prophecies that were spoken over your life and you need to stand on them. You need to war with them. You have to look at this here. This was not even Daniel actually standing on the word of God. He was standing on a prophecy which was the word of God. In those days, it was as good as the word of God. They didn't have the Bible. <laughs> they didn't have the Bible. Almost the, most of the New Testament is chronicles and prophetic words and visions and dreams and encounters and then journeys, people's journeys through different things and what the stories of their lives. So praying in agreement with God's promises is a powerful stance. And some of you, maybe you don't have prophetic words, but you have 7,000 promises in the Bible. That means no matter what battle you're going through, no matter what trial you're facing, there is a promise that is relevant that you can stand on. I've seen people take portions of scripture, write them down and actually put them in their shoes and walk around and stand on them. That's how serious they were as a prophetic act that they wanted to show God, I am literally standing on your word. Now the key is to victory is finding the right promise because a lot of people want to stand on a promise but it's not just any promise that will bring you into victory it's the promise to the specific solution or the specific problem that you're facing so you've got to be a student of the word and Daniel knew the ways of God he knew God he knew the ways of God and he was up on the prophecies it's not like that today because today you got all these willy-nilly prophecies that tickle your ears then you got the judgment guys that want to curse America and say that by November December there will be no more America I mean seriously can we please find a middle ground in the prophetic but, but surely you have words over your life. Surely when you come under a trial and you're facing a, a, something that seems like it's oppressing you or seems like it's trying to destroy or derail God's uh, a will for your life, you can find a promise that fits. You got to get in the word. Tell your neighbor, you got to get in the word. That's where you find the promise. All his promises are yes and amen. So all you have to do is agree with him. That's all you have to do to get victory is keep agreeing with God until the devil gets tired of messing with you. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. He watches over his word to perform it. I heard something powerful, and I don't remember where I heard it. Oh, I heard it from Benny Hinn. I was somewhere, and I just had YouTube videos playing, and his video came up, and he said this. It was so powerful. He says, by the time God has prophesied over you, he's already manifesting the promise. In other words, it's already in motion. As soon as God speaks it, it is in the process of manifesting. It's in the process of being created. But guess what? As soon as you speak the word that's inspired by God, when God gives you a scripture to stand on and you begin to confess that, it's as if he is saying it because he's instructed you to say it and you are the voice in the earth. Does that make sense? So you want to create a new reality in your life, begin to speak the word only, begin to confess the word. Do more than that, begin to decree it, because there are some demons that will only leave and flee by a decree. Am I right? Isn't that right, man of God? Come on now. It's good. And so we, Daniel understood all these things, not because he had a book to read, <laughs> not because he had a CD to listen to, not because there was a podcast, not because there was a YouTube video, but because he knew God. And that is the foundation of victory in life is to know him. When you really know him, you won't be deceived. When you pray God's word, God's, your word will not fall to the ground. The reason why none of Samuel's words fell to the ground is because they weren't Samuel's words. They were God's words. But Samuel had an accurate ear. Some people say Samuel had an accurate voice. Samuel had an accurate voice. The reason he had an accurate voice is because he had an accurate ear. That's right. Sabrina's got it figured out. Praise God. Amen. If you don't have an accurate ear, you can't have an accurate voice. There's all this hubbub about, oh, that's an accurate prophetic voice. That's an accurate prophetic ear. If you don't hear right, you won't speak it right. 
And so Daniel had an accurate ear. He had his ear to the heart of God and he understood. And plus he was paying attention to the true prophets. Did you know how many false prophets were running around in Daniel's day? You don't see Daniel dealing with the false prophets. You know who you see dealing with the false prophets? Jeremiah. Constantly they were coming against him. God was giving him words about it. And so they were still there in Daniel's day, but that wasn't Daniel's assignment. Oh, Jesus. That was Jeremiah's assignment to deal with the false prophets. So Daniel knew what voices to listen to. I just wish I could find a church full of people that would listen to the right voice and the right prophet and the right preacher instead of listening to all this willy-nilly stuff out there. That's why your life is so messed up. None of you, of course, but the ones watching me online. Can you listen to too many voices? Dear God, pick one or two or three preachers or ministries and follow them for a season. Stop, you know, jumping every week to the latest fad. Jesus. We're going to be here or not at this point. When God says something, he plans to bring it to pass. He wouldn't have said it if he wasn't going to bring it to pass. So find the promise that deals with your issue and stand on it. Confess it. Meditate on it. Let it renew your mind. God's promises to Noah came to pass. God's promises to Abraham came to pass. God's promises to Moses came to pass. God's promises to you will come to pass, but you have to do your part. This is a good teaching. Praise God. <laughs> Second Peter 3, 9. Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but he is long-suffering toward us. And the Lord put it to me this way this morning. Listen to this. Sometimes, he, he says, sometimes he showed me that he is preparing us for the promise, but by praying into it, we are diligently seeking his will and he will reward us with the answer at the right time. Amen. That's a good word. He's preparing us. But as we pray during the preparation, because a lot of people during the preparation, they get the monies. Before they ever have a testimony, they get the monies. They want to gripe and complain about what's going on. But when we pray, when we feel like we want to complain, how about if we prayed every time we felt like we wanted to complain? How about if we prayed every time we felt like we wanted to, you know, manifest Shabbat? <laughs> 